I think each one of the Hollywood versions has been over-dramatized a little bit. We've shaved off the edges of some of the facts. Uh, we've certainly enhanced the uh, sexual aspects of some of them, that's for sure. But the truth is, I don't know what the mark really is in, in many of the cases, you know. I've, I've not found everything I should find on the story to be definitive about saying, you're wrong here totally, or you're wrong here partly, or whatever. I had been uh, captain of the Bounty for over 10 years. Uh, when I first started sailing with the Bounty, my true interest was square rig sailing. Such a wonderful story. Uh, like I say, when I started square rig sailing, it was because I like the ship. I like square rigs. But you can't be around the story very long and just find out how fascinating and how intriguing it is. Uh, my name is Dmitry Simakin. Uh, I'm from Moscow, Russia. Uh, my passion, it uh, sounds more, uh, is the story of the mutiny of the bounty and the Pitcairn uh, Island history. This great story has to be told to all people. Nobody in Russia knows about bounty and Pitcairn. When I asked, what do you think uh, when you hear a word bounty? All of them uh, told me a chocolate snack. Well, Fletcher Christian, the leader of the Bounty Mutineers, he is my great, great, great grandfather. And I'm proud to be of him. Uh, I mean, even though a mutiny was not the thing to do, uh, he seemed to have been harshly treated and they went looking for a place to hide when they found Pitcairn. One of the problems that Captain Bly had, and this is kind of a good lesson in management, is I think he was a poor manager. Everybody that came on the trip was volunteered. Nobody was told you had to go do this trip. When they got to Tahiti, the breadfruit had just germinated, meaning it was just starting to sprout. They couldn't transplant it. Captain Bly let his, his crew go ashore and live for basically for five months uh, ashore. Uh, any other captain in the Navy would have said, no, you're not gonna live on shore. You're gonna live here in this hot, steamy old ship, uh, and you're gonna stay right here and uh, be miserable until the breadfruit is ready to, to be transplanted or go dormant. Captain Bly didn't, he let them go ashore. Some of them had girlfriends, wives. Uh, they adopted the Tahitian culture quite a bit. I truly don't believe that Bly was the bad guy that he's been made out to be. Uh, I think he was actually probably too lenient with his crew. Yeah. He had a tongue that was like a surgeon's knife. And he used it uh, not skillfully. And it caused him repeated trouble all the time through his naval career. Uh, he was a fantastic navigator. He was always loyal, uh, loyal to the royal. <laughs> he, was, he was true blue, true uh, British Admiralty, no question about it. So if you're interested, come on in a little closer. 
know I can shout loud, but not long, maybe. Pitcairn Island, you may know, was discovered by a young boy named Robert Pitcairn, who was sailing in HMS Swallow around the world with Carteret. Unfortunately, they weren't very good with longitude then, and most of you probably know that the island got very nicely drawn. They sailed all the way around it, drew very nice pictures of it, but when it came time to put it on the map, they uh, were a little bit off, which worked to the mutineers' favor when they were picking a spot as sanctuary. Our island is so tiny, encircled by the sea. Its shoreline is so rugged, so well as you can see. But we have a like it, a whole morrow today. And if you ever come, I'll be our kindness we will share. By the way, it's beautiful. I, you touched me very deeply when yeah. you were singing that, yes. It was uh, a long journey. We left Pitcairn and uh, four days later we landed at Easter Island on a cruise ship. We uh, spent three days in Easter Island. Then we flew to Tahiti where we spent a few hours at the airport and then on to Rarotonga where we spent about one hour and then on to New Zealand. We spent a little while and then we flew from Wellington to Auckland and then direct to Los Angeles. From Los Angeles, we flew on to Denver and then to Texas, and then we flew to Florida, where we spent a week until just yesterday we came to where this ship is tied up. Over a thousand books have been written on Pitcairn. All of them, except this one, have been used, written to make money for the authors. This one, every copy I sell, Every cent or every mark or every euro I receive goes straight to the island. I think in those days, don't forget they were young men and Tahiti is a paradise today. If I was a young man in those days and hadn't got a, a wife back in England, I would have wanted to have stayed on Tahiti and I would have been technically a mutineer, I think. I would have wanted to go there. I'm the director of the Pitcairn Islands Study Center at Pacific Union College in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, our purpose is to provide information, accurate information about uh, the Bounty Saga. Pitcairn Island in an a from 1890 was a pioneer missionary base in the Pacific Ocean for Seventh-day Adventist Christians. And, um, so every young Seventh-day Adventist growing up in earlier days knew about Pitcairn Island. The Pitcairn people, uh, because of their isolation, um, have, to, have to be everything themselves. Grow their own food, much of it. Fish to gain protein in the diet maybe a few chickens, but anything that breaks down on Pitcairn, you've got to fix it yourself. Uh, and um, the total of that is that Pitcairn is a workaway island. It's not a typical South Sea island at all. There are no white sandy beaches. You have to work if you're going to survive. Uh, the inner, inner relationships of the people on the island make it uh, uh, very special all of whom are related to each other. much, much harder life. Very few of them lived to be very old. Most of them died of injury or disease uh, because of the harshness of their life. Um, we experience a little taste of that and we can imagine it, but we can imagine it enough to know that um, they were much tougher people and much 
um, I won't say braver because I think that was what they expected from life. This bounty is absolutely, absolutely nothing like the original bounty. I guess it floats, okay? So uh, I, I guess the, the bounty, this is Hollywood's idea of what a bounty should look like. The original bounty, uh, Ray, you can help me on this, but I believe the original bounty was like 97 feet, 80, 89 feet. Spire length on this bounty is 180 feet. Hollywood wanted a big boat. They, they couldn't have anything small. It's not like the original bounty at all. But this is a very, very, very good replica of a six-rate frigate of the time era. Six-rate frigate would have been about that size. Uh, six-rate frigate would have had uh, probably about 24 cannons on it. Uh, but it would have been that size, that sail configuration. Uh, the original bounty did not have the royals on it. Um, Hollywood just took this boat and decided that they wanted to make a, a big boat. For the next two movies, yes. Johnny Depp is very much involved Johnny with the Depp. bounty, and we, Johnny Depp was very interested in the bounty, very, very deeply involved in the bounty, uh, and there are other people, Anthony Hopkins and Caroline Alexander, as well as a number of influential artists had been invited, so unfortunately, it was not in their schedules to attend. Barbara Kuchow, this mom, friends of Pitcairn, in appreciation, Bounty, big time, class, and quarter, and class, and class. I come from London, England. And I first became interested in the Mutiny on the Bounty story when my father took me to see a film starring Charles Lawton in the middle of the 1930s. And I've been interested in the subject ever since then. Make sure that everybody signs the guest book. I don't want to miss it. So let's see what we can do. Who's in line? Okay, let me put one over here. Barbara. <laughs> yeah. I'm Terry. Who? Terry Simmons. Terry Simmons, am I supposed to know? One ten. <laughs> I am I'm inmate sorry. number one ten. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. It's nice to see a face. You're all signed. If you if you go onto the website yeah. for Pitcan, you'll see the whole story. When it talks about Moco and the monkey story. I'm not a movie star. So I can't. <laughs> and the pioneer honor will be mentioned. I was a young fellow then. And at that time, uh, we got a message on the uh, ham set from Park and Christian asking if any ships were in the area could take two longboats and their surf boats and their crews to Henderson Island because it was two days to sail there and one day back. When it talks about Moco and the monkey story, that's, that's it. Robert to Marchin and a monkey, so far. That's it. I'm, a, I'm not a movie star. <laughs> Got real mutiny, is he? It's on the Yankee. No, this is the Pioneer Isle. Okay. This is when they went. The monkey. Yeah. There's Moko. Oh, this is. Oh my goodness. That's 1957. 5758. Yes. Wow. The title of my talk is The Influence of the Panama Canal and Marconi Upon the Pit Cairn Islanders. And that's part one. And part two is Inside the Pit Cairn Island Family, 1928 to 1938. And they tie in together very closely, as you'll see. It's going to ride around the 1950s. Um, yep, uh, I don't have actually the exact date.
don't really have any footage of the accident happening, just a very short piece of the people who attended the work when it happened. But you will see, I thought it was impressive photo uh, or video of the boat on the rocks. And I, I don't say very much. You can just watch and see for yourself. about that and it seems more so remote than ever before with the way shipping is today. We get mail about three or four times a year and our supplies come in from New Zealand. We pay heavy freight charges. We have only about 10 hours of electricity per day and uh, we are hoping that within the next year we can perhaps have wind generated power electricity. We make carvings which we sell to the cruise ships. There's about seven cruise ships that come to the island each year. And we're able to sell uh, things to them. And uh, we dry bananas also, which we export off to New Zealand. And just in the last two or three years, we've been trying to increase the number of beehives on the island to produce honey. If you really want a much better chance of landing on Pitcairn, then you want to take an expedition ship. These ships are considerably smaller, they don't have the uh, slot machines and dancing girls, uh, but some of them are really quite nice. Uh, now, all of the expedition ships don't go to Pitcairn every year, there's not a regular schedule for it, and this coming year there are only two expedition ships scheduled to call at Pitcairn, but sometimes in the future, some of the others will be back. Well, it's wonderful to go to Pitcairn. If you can do it, it's absolutely marvelous, but not easy for you to get there. And he finally decided to do it on our cruise, which he said it was going to be the last time they would get back to Pitcairn. So we took the two 37-foot long boats, took them around the back side of St. Uh, Paul Rock, St. Paul Rock, and then we came around, we let them go, and all the people in Pitcairn Island started singing in the street by and by. And they were all crying, and we were all crying. <laughs>
when Bly and the rest of the crew members were put in a longboat to do a 3,600 mile voyage. Okay, 3,600 miles. You know, that, that much freeboard, yeah. To me, this is the greatest survival story ever. Fletcher Christian and his band of men on board the Bounty spent uh, about two months searching the Pacific, looking for Pitcairn. The, the island is small, but it is very beautiful. I think there is so much about life in that story. Uh, we learn survivability from people uh, who have eked out a living uh, on this little remote uh, rough island uh, making their own way in society. Uh, so you have a lot of different life experiences that you learn through this story, just all in one story. I've been with the Bounty since 2001. Um, I come on board and sail as much as I can and love this ship, love being part of the crew and being part of the Bounty story. I'm sure that this conference is not the last one. Thank you.